a bit of an odd one here. This, of course, is an air pump. Just a standard automotive air pump from EP Auto, I think. Got this maybe five or six years ago. I don't know. It's We've had it for a while. And I was filling up a tire and it stopped working. And so of course I checked the obvious things, checked to see if it had blown its own fuse first, which it does have a 10 amp, whoop, little nib popped out of there. It does have a 10 amp fuse. So that's interesting that it actually has overcurrent protection on it. I wasn't really expecting it on a inexpensive air pump, but that fuse is intact. I just visually inspected it, but I'll double check it with the voltmeter. But basically, yeah, I'm gonna open this thing up and see what is going on with it and see if we can get it fixed because it worked fine until yesterday. Just put the meter in continuity mode and we'll check that fuse, which it looks fine. Yeah, fuse is good. Check the car fuse. The car has 12 volts at 15 amps per circuit. So there's two circuits, one in the front of the car, one in the back of the car, and each of them are rated 15 amps. Those fuses are fine. I didn't even need to check them because I use the car's emergency tire inflator and repair kit, and that one worked on the same circuit just fine. So clearly not anything to do with the car. Fuse is fine. The next thing I can think of is just to open this thing up. Actually, before I do that, I think I'll see if it draws any current. And for that, I'll need some alligator clips to clip onto the air pump. And I'll just use a bench supply. This is a 300 watt bench top supply. I'll start it at 12 volts and I'm gonna set the current limit to, well, it won't let me go above 10 amps, but I'll set it to eight amps. There's no reason why this thing should go above eight amps. Um, switches off. This is negative. And this is positive. Turning on the output. And we got no current flowing. Oh, oh, what's going on there? So we got the power supply cam set up because I didn't expect what I just saw. Just gonna see the voltage. Oh, we don't want mixed, we just want DC. So somehow it's telling me that it's got 12 volts. Oh, it's still on. Okay, now it's off. Cool. Oh, I didn't flip the switch. That's what, okay. So there's 12 volts present. Let me get the amp clamp on there too. The strange thing is it was running and that stopped. It wasn't like it had difficulty starting. So I'm gonna put this on DC, zero it out. Get it on, Let's see if I can get all these things in here. Beautiful. First thing I'm gonna do is turn on the power supply, 12 volts, no current flowing because the switch is off. And I thought perhaps something had opened internally and what you'll see is that when I flip the switch that it's drawing eight amps. It's current limiting at 72 watts, 75 watts. So I'm gonna take it up to 14 which is funny that it hasn't blown the fuse because, well, I mean, it wouldn't at this point because it's not exceeding the 10 amp limit from the fuse on the plug. But uh, I'm going to now take it up to what would be the car's operating voltage. So when you start the car up, typically your alternator voltage in the case this is a hybrid vehicle. So the high voltage battery is going to be put through a, a step down DC to DC converter to about 14.4 volts. And I've checked that on the, the vehicle itself and it's pretty much right at 14.4. Let's see what happens now. I still have the current limit at eight amps. I think I might crank it up to eight and a half. I feel like what's happened here is actually a, a turn to turn short, but we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna try the same thing again. Let's see what we get. Okay, we're, oh, we already were on. Forgot to turn it off before. Nope, still limited 80, 82 watts. That is, that seems like it's probably a, a short inside. Let's open it up. I'd like to be able to try to fix it before I do more destructive testing on it. What I was kind of expecting to see was just no current flowing at all. Voltage present, no current. And to me that would indicate that this was something along the lines of a terminal just breaking or a wire breaking or something like that. And it doesn't seem like that is the case. It seems like it's something else. This, this had only been running for maybe a, not even a minute. 
maybe 30 seconds. It started it running fine. It didn't sound bad or anything like that. I mean, it is a very loud compressor. In fact, the one that comes with the vehicle sounds way better. And it has been dropped several times. I mean, it is just, it's, it's been heavily used. Okay, let's get this last one off. That doesn't sound good. Okay. Is there one more in the center here? Don't mess that. Let's see. Yeah, there's one right there. So five screws, not four. Unless this thing has a seven plus year warranty. I'm pretty sure it's out of warranty. So just two halves of this. Oh. This is just paper from the trunk of the car, but it didn't actually go inside because this cavity here is actually a cavity for storing the cable. So it wasn't like I had a bunch of paper stuck inside where the motor's at. It's just a simple piston. It's really kind of neat. It's very simple. There it is. There's the motor uh, driving a gear, just driving a, a single piston. Here's the basically the the crankshaft, the piston arm, and the piston, which is inside there, driving a bellow. It's pushing in, the bellow presses down, lets air, so air only can go one way. It won't suck air back the other direction. Or that this might be what, I think this might be a pressure regulator thing on this side. So that's the, all the stuff for the pump side. The motor, there's a fan. The motor does, oh. Oh, it's really getting stuck and bound up in a spot. Like it, did the whole thing move? What happened? It is not happy. So it rotates. As you can see me doing here, rotating it, but it's not smooth. I can feel it like grinding against the inside of the motor. Yikes. Did a bearing fail or something? I don't really know what's going on there. The motor is warm. Let's turn it this way. It does seem like it's not particularly straight. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it does seem like it's kind of like this way instead of this. But it didn't make any pop or make any kind of loud m mechanical sounds. It just stopped. I think the motor can't pass through that, but there are two screws on it. So I need to get the whole thing out, which is held in, I think just by this screw here. There's not a lot of screws holding it inside this. It's just, I think this one screw that holds this whole thing down because it could just come out just easily come out yep there we go yeah there is a gasket there that's holding this together but i think there is a bellows in there oh yeah i think this this acts as the pressure regulator that sounds that feels just terrible there are two screws they are just holding this motor into this assembly and i can't think of unless i take the motor out and the assembly is binding um, I, which I don't think is happening. I think it's the motor. Like its bearing has failed and now it is just not spinning in proper alignment. Let's see if we got that all the way. There's a bit of grease, but I think most of it's gone after years of use and this thing getting very hot. I mean, I, I again, I didn't, I never ran it more than 10 minutes at a time. Ah, oh, geez, that isn't good. I think this is definitely a brushed motor. Because you can hear that. I think get the microphone close to it. If I turn it, you can hear that grinding. Wow. There's no way to take this motor apart. I mean, it's all stamped and pressed. So there's no way really to do anything to fix this. Unless I can somehow free that carbon brush that has like fallen in there. I don't know if I can see it with a flashlight or not. It's sad. I, I probably could get a re replacement motor, but this is so inexpensive. It's worked well for many years as making funny sounds as I play with this. It's almost worth just keeping the play with that. I think this is a pressure relief. This little guy right here, because it looks like there's some holes in that and I bet you that pops before more violent anything. Well, this is a bummer. Not what I thought. I might do a separate video where I take this apart and kind of see what's going on with it. 
it's not a magnetic thing. It's not, this just is collided. Bearings look okay. Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna put some power on it again and we'll just see. It's just sitting in its lock rotor state, which is a, which is a bummer. But I will connect it back to the power supply. There's no need for the amp clamp or the voltage measurements because the, the power supply will do a good enough job. 14.4 volts with an eight and a half amp current limit. Try this again and we'll see what happens with this motor. Power. Now, do we get any arcing inside the... No, it's just nothing really happens. Let me get it to a free spot and see if it even turns. Yep. Like something inside catastrophically failed. Let's see if I can see in there with a flashlight. I can see the brush on one side. I can see the brush on the other. It's almost like the, maybe one of the permanent magnets came loose and it's just rubbing against the armature. I don't, yeah, that doesn't seem like the brushes. It seems like one of the permanent magnets has come loose and it's just attached to the armature and now it's getting stuck. That's crazy. Bombersville. Yeah, that's what I think has happened here. As noisy as this thing was because it wasn't quiet, where it mounts in, it has little rubber inserts that allow it to vibrate a bit. I'm sure with this, it actually makes it a bit quieter. Interesting. Well, that was a surprise. I did not expect it to be a lock rotor failure and a lock rotor failure that seems to have originated from not the brushes failing. Now that I think about it, the brush failing in a DC brush motor, I think would just it would just not commutate. Like you wouldn't see any current flowing. But yeah, this this like binding it seems to me like it's the armature is just like it's just grinding against the permanent magnet that's my guess i think that's about as far as i can go with this i hope you enjoyed this video if you did you know what to do and i will see you in the next video take care